It was a cloudy night in November 1957 when the Wyeshara County Sheriff's Department visited a remote farmhouse. The car's headlights lit up in the darkness as a lone deputy moved around the rear of the house. Hearing a door rattling in the wind, the deputy's torch shone on a shed, hidden away. As the nervous deputy entered, his flashlight caught on something. A body, hanging from the rafters upside down, crossbar at the ankles and rope around her wrists, headless and gutted. Here, in the dark lounge, we discuss what happened. Edward Theodore Gein was born in La Crosse, Wisconsin on July the 27th, 1906. Early in his life, he moved to Plainfield, Wisconsin with his mother, father and elder brother Henry to live on a 155 acre farm. It was an isolated location, but suited his parents. Ed's father, George Gein, was a violent alcoholic, a failed salesman. He had sold his business to go back to farm life. As a keen hunter, he would take his boys with him to kill a hog or deer. Then, in front of them, he would begin stripping its skin, filleting its muscles and gutting its innards. The blood and smell of death would envelop them all. Years later, under questioning, Edward claimed to have become sexually aroused while watching a hog being slaughtered and gutted. As Ed's father's violent streak raged in the household, his mother became more protective of her sons. Augusta was a devoted Lutheran and divorce would not be an option. Instead, her fanatical beliefs would isolate the boys from their father and the local community. She would draw strength from the immortality of the world, that all women were whores and every human thought and deed was infected with sinful motives. Ed worshipped his mother. The boys grew up alone and lacked social engagement. Some teachers remarked on Ed laughing at odd moments, like he was in his own world, with imaginary voices speaking to him. After George died from heart failure because of alcoholism, Ed's brother Henry began to reject his dominating mother's views. He and Ed would fight on a regular basis as George criticised his mother's views out loud. On May the 16th, 1944, Ed and Henry rushed out to extinguish a bushfire that threatened the family farm. Only one returned. Henry was found dead the next day. The county coroner determined the death to be by asphyxiation from the smoke. However, Henry's body was also found to have bruises to his head, which were deemed to have been caused by a blunt instrument. Did Henry go too far in denouncing his mother to Ed? Was he the first victim of the wrath of Edward Gein? According to many traditional interpretations, Cain was the originator of evil, violence and greed. After Henry's death, Augustus suffered a paralysing stroke. Gein devoted himself to looking after her because of either love, guilt or an unhealthy mixture of both. Augusta's power and influence over Gein grew and he rarely left the farm, or her, alone. Then, just two years after her son Henry's death, Augusta would succumb to illness and Gein would now be completely alone in the world. Augusta's sway still influenced Gein's world, with women still seen as a terrible influence on men. In the house, 
Gein would hammer nails in wooden boards covering the doors so that nothing could touch his mother's pristine world left behind. Ed secreted himself in the kitchen and slept in the parlour nearby. As Gein's life became more isolated, he became more involved with his other passion, reading. Consuming books about anatomy amongst the squalid conditions, he also developed an interest in reading about cannibalism and the illegal tests of the Nazis during the war. However, Gein's behaviour had not gone unnoticed. On November the 16th, 1957, Bernice Warden awoke before the sun had risen and treated herself to a breakfast of eggs and rye toast. She wanted to be early to work at the hardware store as the delivery was coming in later that morning and she liked to be prepared. Later that day, Frank Warden, Bernice's son, come to visit his mother and find the shop deserted. The till register had been emptied and a trail of blood led to the rear door. Bernice Warden was gone. Frank Warden was not only Bernice's son, but a local deputy sheriff. He alerted his colleagues who found the last written receipt from the hardware store had been written to Ed Gein for a gallon of antifreeze. Gein was quickly arrested and the Wyeshara County Sheriff's Department began the search of the family farm. Bernice Warden's decapitated body was soon found hanging in the shed, upside down and cut open and gutted like a wild animal. Physically sickened by the sight, the Sheriff's Department moved to the house, still unprepared for what they would encounter. Once inside the game property, the investigators found Bernice's head in a sack on the kitchen counter. But as the detectives moved around the property, they noticed that normal household items held a grisly undercurrent. Holding their hands to their mouths, they found human organs in jars and skulls used as soup bowls. Human skin stretched to cover chair seats, a belt made from female nipples, a pair of lips as a window shade drawstring. A local woman, Mary Hogan, had gone missing several years before. Her face was found to be used as a mask. Gein confessed the next day, but told a story to the police that sickened all to their stomachs. During the night, Gein would visit various Plainfield cemeteries to exhume recently buried bodies. These bodies would be female, middle-aged, and to some extent resemble Gein's mother. More gruesome was the combination of the books on cannibalism, skulls and bones converted into utensils, and Bernice Warden's heart found in a bag in front of Gein's stove. The question is, did he eat any of his victims? Due to the fact most of the bodies were found to have come from the cemetery, it is unlikely, but cannot be ruled out. More body parts were found in drawers, human noses in a jar, vulvas in a shoebox, and skulls as his bedposts. Human body parts treated as trophies to be displayed around the house. This led to the most shocking discovery of all. A corset made from a female torso, sewn together, and leggings made from human skin. Combined with Mary Hogan's face mask, had Gein been making a costume of female skin? Was he trying to complete metamorphosis into a woman? Or to transform into the living memory of his mother? Ed Gein was clinically diagnosed as a schizophrenic in 1957. After 10 years in a mental institution, he was deemed mentally competent to stand trial. In 1968, Edward Theodore Gein 
was found guilty by reasons of insanity. Did the trauma his parents caused through physical and mental abuse lead Edward Gein to descend into mental illness that would cause so much hurt to the people of Plainfield, Wisconsin? Ed Gein died in 1984, aged 77. His story has been used to fuel the horror film industry over the past 60 years. From Psycho to Silence of the Lambs, the horror of Ed Gein's story shocks to this day. Thank you.